So a quantity that is described by a single number is called a scalar quantity, and we're very used to these, such as just the number 5, and we know that 5 plus 5 equals 10. A quantity that has both magnitude and direction is called a vector quantity, and here's a, a vector of length 5 meters per second. And when you add two vectors, five, both of magnitude 5, the final answer is anywhere between 0 and 10, so it's, it's a different it's a very different kind of mathematics. We geometrically represent vectors by an arrow with a tail and a, and a tip. And when we draw a symbol to represent a vector quantity, it's good practice to put a little arrow over the top of the, of the vector, which we're careful to do in this textbook. So an example, suppose S Sam starts from his front door, takes a walk, and ends up 200 feet to the northeast of where he started. So if you take uh, his final position minus his, his initial position, that's called his displacement vector, which would be written as the magnitude, comma, the direction, 200 feet north, comma, northeast. Another example, if Sam and Bill are neighbors and they both walk 200 feet to the northeast of their front door, then their displacement vector for both of them is 200 feet northeast. Two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction regardless of the starting points of the vectors. So we would say that these two vectors are the same. An example of vector addition, if we have a hiker who first walks four miles east and then four miles north, the net displacement is the sum of these two vectors. And since these happen to be at right angles, you can use uh, the Pythagorean theorem to find that the magnitude of C is 5 miles. To find the direction, you'd have to look at this right angle triangle and work through the trigonometry. So uh, it looks like the tangent of theta is B divided by A. And so theta is 10 to the minus 1, the inverse tangent of 3 quarters, which turns out to be 37 degrees. Altogether, you'll find that C, which is the sum of A and B, is equal to 5 miles, comma, 37 degrees north of east. So there's two ways of adding vectors. If you have vector E going up and vector D going diagonal, and you want to find the sum, you can use the tip-to-tail rule, in which you slide the tail of E to the tip of D, and then form the vector from the tail of to the tip of E. Uh, equivalently, you can uh, leave the vectors with their tails connected and form a parallelogram with them, and then the sum is measured from that where the vectors start to the opposite side of the parallelogram, the diagonal. If you want to add more than two vectors, uh, it's easy to do this with the tip-to-tail method. Say so you have a hiker that's, that walks D1, then D2, then D3, then D4. We connect them all tip to tail, and we end up with the net displacement. And that's written as D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4. So more vector mathematics. You can multiply a vector by a positive scalar, and you end up with another vector which is changed in the same direction, but changed in magnitude by the scalar, c in this case. If uh, You can make a negative vector by just reversing the direction of the vector and keeping the same magnitude. It turns out the zero vector has zero length, and that would be if you add a plus negative a, you get zero. You can multiply a, a vector by a negative scalar, in which case you change the magnitude by the absolute value of that scalar, and you reverse the direction of the, of the vector. And if you want to subtract vectors, what you do is you, if you're trying to find a minus c, you take a and you add negative c. So here's an example. c is going to the right, but you take a and you add negative c going to the left, and that's a, the vector a minus c. And you can use the parallelogram rule uh, for in the same way adding a and minus c. 
So a coordinate system is some kind of a grid that you lay down so that you can find where you are. For example, here's a sailboat out in the ocean. You might define latitude and longitude to specify. When you're setting up a coordinate system, you can feel free to choose where the coordinate system goes and how you rotate it. By convention, we normally choose the x-axis to be uh, horizontal or sideways on your pa paper and the y-axis to be up and down. And the, we talk sometimes about quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. So suppose we have a, a vector A and it's on a coordinate system, y and x. We can define two new vectors, a sub y and a sub x, such that uh, a is the sum of a sub x plus a sub y. And here's the, uh, these two vectors added showing the parallelogram rule. What we say here is that we've broken this vector into, or decomposed this vector into its com perpendicular components. The nice thing about these components is that the a sub y is parallel to the y-axis and a sub x is parallel to the x-axis. So these act like one-dimensional vectors, meaning that you can specify them with a single number called the component. So, for example, uh, vector a here has a y component of 3 minus 1 or plus 2, and an x component of 4 minus 1 or plus 3. The component tells us how big the component vector is, and if you add a sign, it tells you which, uh, which direction it points towards. So, for example, vector B in this second diagram has a y component, and again is plus 2, but the x component is actually negative 1 minus 1, so it's, it's negative 2 is the x component. So to sum up, the absolute value of uh, a sub x is called the magnitude of the component vector a sub a sub x. The sign is positive if it points in the positive x direction and negative if it points in the negative direction, and that's similar for the y component a sub y. You should be able to move between the geometric representation, so uh, magnitude and direction, and the component representation of any vector. So here we have a, if you know a sub x and a sub y, you can find the magnitude by using Pythagoras, and you can find the direction by looking at the trigonometry of this, this right triangle. So here's the angle theta, the tangent is a sub y over a sub x, so this angle theta is the inverse tangent of a sub y over a sub x. If you already know the magnitude a and this uh, angle theta, you can find the components, again, looking at the trigonometry. If you know a and you know theta, then the sine of theta is a sub y over a, and rearranging that is you find that a sub y is a times sine theta. And similarly for the x component is a cos theta. Now, this is just to remind you, please don't blindly apply those equations from the previous slide. If you have uh, an angle defined differently, for example, here's a vector b pointing down and to the right, then you can still use Pythagoras to go from the components to, the, to find the magnitude, but you should be careful when you use the tangent. Here you'd want to use b sub x over the absolute value of b sub y. Also, in this case, uh, it turns out that the x component is the sine of this angle phi, and the y component is the cosine. But again, it's just because we've used this angle here, set up the angle so that it's between 0 and 90 degrees. This comes up in physics quite a lot. So here is a figure with two vectors. Uh, they both have a magnitude of 1, Neither of them have any units, they're dimensionless, and they're parallel to the coordinate axes x and y. These are called unit vectors, and they have special symbols. This little caret symbol on the top is, I call it a hat. So i hat is magnitude of 1 in the positive x direction, and j hat 
has a magnitude of 1 in the positive y direction. And these just establish the directions of the positive axes of the coordinate system. Sometimes people talk about k hat as being in the positive z direction for a three-dimensional coordinate system. When you decompose a vector, it's useful sometimes to write each vector as being the magnitude or uh, the component times i hat or j hat. So you can write the full vector a as being vector of a, a sub x vector plus a sub y vector or this a sub x times i hat plus a sub y times j hat. When you're working with vectors you can use regular algebraic addition on the components. So if you have d vector is a plus b plus c then the x component, d sub x, is equal to the sum of the x components of all these vectors. And similarly, d sub y is equal to a sub y plus b sub y plus c sub y. If you want to subtract two vectors, r equals p minus q. Again, you can use that uh, tip to tail rule using p plus negative q, or you can just use the components r sub x is equal to p sub x minus q sub x, and r sub y equals p sub y minus q sub y. If you want to multiply by a scalar, this uh, t equals t vector equals c times s vector. Just take that scalar and multiply it times each of the components. Keep in mind, when you're setting up a coordinate system, you don't have to have x horizontal and y uh, vertical. You can tilt them, or you can even put y horizontal. It all depends on what's most convenient for your problem. You always need to have uh, y and x perpendicular to each other, but you may want to have one of them being parallel to a surface, such as if you're working with something on, in, on an incline. 